This place that you see behind me here is the River Wye and I can quite honestly say that this is probably the most beautiful stretch of river that I've ever fished in the UK. So this trip came around because me and Ollie really fancied having a go at catching the fantastic species which is a barbel. Me and him have never done it before so it is all new to us and everything new comes with a challenge doesn't it and it's just been the most remarkable trip and um, some of the scenery that goes with a trip like this is just incredible. The uh, the wildlife, the stretches of landscape that you can see, it, it really makes it all worthwhile when you have to make big travel arrangements to get down to these places. So not knowing much about the River Wye, we had to do our own research, um, ask a few mates and they kindly helped me out with a few bits of information, but there's still not spots you know people don't point you out spots and just tell you a few sections that might be worth a go and that's what sort of happened um, we, we got on the net and started digging and we come up with a couple of stretches one which we, you could night fish and that was our first portal call a, um, and a big old estate which has a lovely section running all the way through it's probably about a mile long something like that and there is just some incredible spots to be had on that um, on that stretch. But it just, when you turn up, there's so much fast flowing water that um, us as carp anglers, we're not used to. So um, you have to get your sort of head in the game. But once you start recognizing actually how to fish these areas, um, you can start getting amongst some fish. And that's what happened to us basically. When we arrived at the stretch, it was run by a, um, an estate, and there was a big old manor house there, and it had a private, probably mile, mile and a half stretch that we could fish. Um, and when we turned up, you know, we were, we felt a little bit out of our comfort zone, uh, because, like I said, it's all new to us with all this vast flowing river. The rivers down here are a lot wider than what we have back in my county. So, um, yeah, it's all a learning curve but we decided to take on board all the information that we've researched and people have told us. And it was to keep moving around, you know. The only way that you're gonna locate Barbel is to keep moving, trying different spots. If it's not happening, then you move on to the next one. Um, bait a few areas, go off, and then come back to it a bit later. And that's what we'd done that day. And it wasn't until later on that day where we were just walking and back along. We'd, we'd been fishing for a good couple of hours now. And we were walking back along the bank and I see loads of shapes on the opposite bank. And I told Ollie about it and he thought it was just the sun. And I see them just moving and I'm sure I was absolutely positive it was fish. Um, so we decided to give it a go. And it, the access down to that spot, you just can't fish it from the bank. So we had to get our waders on and wade all the way up the margins and we found 
a really, really productive spot. But unfortunately, it wasn't for the barbell. It was those big old juicy chub. How about that then? First fish of the trip. Nice chub. Found some, um, found some fish earlier over there on the far margin. And, uh, got on them and yeah, it didn't take long to get one. Nice. Don't see a barbels over there now. How magical is this? Uh, out on the line, got a proper bend in the rod, and it's taking some line here. What? The most graceful of nets. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, it might be witching hour for a barbell, might not it? So me and Ollie you drove four hours this morning to this special place you can see behind me. It's the River Wye and we've come here for the barbell. But uh, we are wading through these cool old chub at the moment. Um, good bit of sport. Ollie's had a couple now. And this is my first one from this, uh, this beautiful river. Look at it. What a lovely place. And hopefully before we go home, we can get amongst one of these barbels. Not a bad chub, that. That, oh. Magical. That spot, we just could not put a foot wrong. You know, when you're fishing on a current, Tackling these fish, you have got some serious bending that rod. It is like you're hooked to like a 20 pound carb equivalent, you know. They really do fight hard and it just kept us entertained for hours. It was absolutely incredible. We, Like I said, we couldn't put a foot wrong. We were just casting our cage feeders straight into this spot and they were going off before they've even hit the deck. It was absolutely incredible. Um, we were just getting one after another. Um, we probably had about eight fish each. We probably had 15, 16 in total probably. And the biggest five, five and a half pounds. So it was a good bit of sport. But um, that soon dried up a couple of hours later and we were starting to forget about the true reason why we've traveled four hours down to this river. And that was to catch a barbell. found ourselves going back to the van to get set up for the night because we, we left it quite late. We only had probably an hour left to get our stuff sorted, get our brollies, our bed chairs, and try and find an area where we thought might hold barbell. Um, and we started walking and we bumped into an angler um, and he fishes there quite often. And if it wasn't for him, I don't know if we would have ended up in this swim, but. He, um, he told us that um, he'd caught a few fish out in the middle um, of, this, of this area um, and he was going, so he said jump in here. So he'd had a couple of barbel that day, so you know, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? You have, to, you have to go with the knowledge of, <laughs> of people that regularly fish the stretches, so that is what we've done. Um, we got our rods all set, ready for the night got a few more chub in the hours of darkness and then suddenly my rod has absolutely ripped off. You could tell the difference between a barbell take and a chub take. It was the most incredible fight and me and Ollie landed our first barbell from the River Wye and it was a magical moment. You never guess what I've got a River Wye barbel in there Good one, George. and my first ever barbel absolutely ripped off, Busted off didn't it? I knew that was something a bit different <laughs> sick our trip down to the river Wye four hours 
and we've got one. Plowed through loads of chub today. And uh, we set up for the night. And finally, our efforts are paid off. And it's a pretty good one as well. Look at that. My first ever river barbel. And uh, <laughs> that fight was pretty cool. These fish are pretty cool. And this trip is going to be a special one. Oh, I can feel it. Look at that. Beautiful. Let's get that back. Shortly after I slipped that barbel back, we were sitting there thinking um, if there was another chance, you know. I really wanted Ollie to catch one as well so that we were both on a level playing field so we both had that experience of holding up one of those fish and it didn't take long. Obviously the barbel moved into that section for that hour and Ollie was into his first river barbel. Eventually got one boy. <laughs> yeah man. They do. Shame we're having them at night. Yeah, still there. Yeah, we'll do our best with the filming. Yeah, man. Well, there we go then. It's another good sized barb, yeah. wasn't it? What an absolute screamer. Hell of a fight. And eventually we got it in the net. That's a barbel each for us. Hopefully, a few more to come. Eight and a half pound. Two eight pound barbell in the space of about an hour. Hopefully some more out there. She's good to go. She's off. After Ollie's first incredible river barbell, we decided to get the rods back out and get some well needed shut eye because we were absolutely knackered from the travelling that day. And you know what? All the fish left us alone um, and uh, we got some good rest and we were back up. First thing, we got the rods back on the spot. We fished on for a good couple of hours after that and the heavens absolutely opened. The the weather conditions totally changed, you know, we were seriously having to hold on to our brollies. Um, and Ollie's got a very um, low van, you know, it shouldn't be off-roading across the fields and that. Um, so we were both getting very concerned, more Ollie to be honest, that we weren't going to be able to get out of the field, which, um, which I totally understand. So we both reeled in. And we, uh, and, we, and we disappeared to make sure we, he could get his van out of the field. And then we had to walk back. And we fished on for a good couple of hours after that. Um, and we had nothing else to report except a dodgy old brown river wide trout, which Ollie managed to capture. It's a brownie. Bloody brownie. <laughs> Ready? There we go then. Another species ticked off. Nice trout. Bit of a weird bite. I don't actually know what happened there, but certainly when it was on. So we're still in the swim that produced the two barbel for us last night. Um, since then, it's gone rather quiet this morning. Um, we fished hard and nothing's materialising. So we've got another section booked about 15 minute drive from here. So we're going to pack up now, get all the way back to the van and then hopefully have a nice afternoon or evening 
trying to find some decent spots on the other stretch. So yeah, let's get out of it and hopefully go catch another fish. We're going for it. Nope. Fuck here, will we? Let's walk. We're going for the walk in. It really is an absolute picturesque stretch we've got here. It's very small. It's only probably um, about 200 yards that you're allowed to fish. Um, but it really is. I mean, look at it behind me. How magnificent is that? I'm in love with these stretches of river. They, they just, they're so picturesque when you're down here. We haven't seen another angler since we've been here. And you honestly, you feel like you're on a real trip away, um, just fishing, just how it should be, you know? Out in the nature, not another single person around and going back to where you learn it all, you know, fishing on the feeder or fishing with a float. And it's just, um, it really brings back those childhood memories. And, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna do a lot more of this in the future, that's for sure. Since we've been here, it hasn't been very productive. We've had a few chub from the bay opposite where we've been fishing on the back of the flow. Um, but that soon has dried up as well. So we decided to bait a few areas. I'd come and do this bit of videoing and then we will get back to trying to catch a barbel within the hour. And hopefully we'll have something to, to show you guys before we end. If we've got nothing to report this evening, all I can say is this trip has been remarkable and it's brought back so many childhood memories like I said and it's, um, it just gives you that fire that you need in your angling you know to get out chasing different species and just enjoying fishing for what it is I mean it's surrounded by this beautiful scenery um, and I can't recommend it enough Witching hour. Witching hour. <gasps> barbell. Fucking barbell. Oh my god. Oh my god.
lovely way to end the trip. Mega result. I think we're cool that day. Four hour drive coming up. Let's go. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and I will see you again very shortly in the next installment of Forbidden Roots videos. See you again.